go to Dean's page. Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Guru Tom Pena for FMA Discussion uh, 203. And tonight, uh, we're going to have Christian von Braun from uh, Lightning Scientific in East Germany. Uh, if you notice, I introduced the this whole episode slightly differently uh, because we are trying to uh, eventually, hopefully next year, we are going to start like doing the interview live simultaneously in Facebook and in YouTube. So we're just trying some bits, okay, uh, to see how it goes. And before I bring in Christian, I would like to remind you that on Sunday, we are going to have the Christmas raffle. So if you haven't uh, bought your tickets yet from Dean, please uh, do so. Okay, I'll, I'll gonna give I'll gonna get you more information about that. So let's get Christian in. Hi. Hi, Christian. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm great. Thanks. Good. Okay, so uh, guys, good evening again. This is Guru Tom Pena, and uh, tonight we have a uh, master. Is it? That's your rank now. Yeah, yeah, master. it is. <laughs> so, Mas Master Christian von Braun from uh, Lightning Scientific Germany. So he is my lightning brother from a different mother. Well, different instructor, because his lineage <laughs> came from um, uh, <laughs> Master Sean Porter who is also based in the UK, okay? So uh, if you're watching this um, episode, if you're watching this interview, please don't forget to say hi and tell us where you are watching from, okay? And if you're going to have any questions for Christian, uh, please don't hesitate to put them in the comment box and we are going to make sure that uh, we'll address it, okay? So good evening, bro. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, thanks. And uh, yeah, had a had a nice evening. Was on a Christmas market, and um, yeah, now I'm sitting here talking to you. Great. <laughs> the the wonders of the wonders of technology, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, how are things there in uh, um, how are things there in Germany? I mean, maybe COVID wise or Christmas preparation wise. Yeah, it, it interlinks a little bit this year uh, because, uh, of course, we have some restrictions because of COVID. So the city is relatively empty, but um, we are allowed to visit our families and everything. Uh, okay. As far as I know at the moment. So it um, mm -hmm. will be a more normal Christmas than last year, I guess. Okay. I hope. Yeah, well, so far, that's, yeah, so far, fingers crossed. Yeah, it's yeah, the same here yeah, in the yeah. UK. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, but, I, think, uh, I mean, same still same. people are, Sorry? still people are kind of like expecting. People yeah, are still because... ex expecting things to happen in Christmas. Same, same, same here, and nobody knows really. Mm. Well, I do hope that uh, we manage to um, we manage to see our families or relatives as well or friends for this Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So um, let's let's say hi to our um, viewers, early viewers. We've got Royce Ramos from New Jersey and Master Carl from UK. <laughs> it's great. Hi, Carl. It's um, um, somehow my chat is translated to German. So Karl Butcher. Oh, really? Oh, that's good. Karl Butcher is Karl, Karl Metzger. Butcher, yes. It's Karl Metzger here. And what? Metzger is just Butcher in German. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, your, your last this will name, be interesting. Your last name was translated to German. You are Karl Metzger now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you you might want to christen Carl when, when you see him next. I, I do, I do. I will yep. and we got Lawrence. I will baptize him with beer. Yeah, we've got Yeah, we got Lawrence Eugenio from uh Santa Rosa, California. Lawrence is a also Elsai, 
but uh, he is with uh, Grandmaster Romeo Valenzuela in the Philippines. Ah, okay. Yep. And then, of course, you've got Uwe Kramer. Hi, Uwe. Grüße zurück. So, yeah, good evening, guys. Thank you for um, watching this uh, interview with um, Master Christian. <laughs> Carl said he's, he will change yeah. his name on the passport. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> okay, so let's jump right in your journey to martial arts. How did you start? What martial arts did you start with? Who was your inspiration? Uh, I started with judo as a kid, um, as a lot of a lot of us did, I guess. And um, yeah, basically, since then, I was hooked in martial arts. And um, I did it 10 years, so uh, from 6 to mm -hmm. 16. And uh, I still can do the break falls. So what you learn as a kid, you, you keep. And yeah, um, yeah then, and then when I got older, um, I also started karate and jujitsu. It was a big martial arts club in, 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 in my city, and uh, they had this martial arts as well. So um, mm -hmm. hopefully I wanted to, to, to see more. And um, I did this for quite a while. But um, when you are a young boy, all the funny stuff that you want to do, they didn't do in this club. They didn't have tournaments. They didn't break boards. Uh, they didn't do the, the, the key eye because of the neighborhood. And so um, yeah. I, I left this and switched to Taekwondo, which did all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, that was great as well. And um, I did this for some years. And uh, then okay. Wing Chun came, became bigger in Germany. And uh, I was curious and started Wing Chun. And um, yeah. they had an Eskrima class. So uh, I started La Tosa Eskrima there. Um, OK. If I remember correctly, this was in 91, 92, something around that. And uh, yeah, from then on, I. Uh, I fell in love with, uh, with, with Filipino martial arts on, on first sight, really. And um, okay. then there was a martial arts fair in Germany where I met Alfred Plath. Uh, we didn't have the internet then. And Alfred was a publisher of a Filipino martial arts magazine. Maybe you heard about it. Uh, it was called El Juramentado. And uh, it was... Uh, like a newspaper for Filipino martial arts. And um, oh, yeah, yeah. we became yeah. friends. And he uh, introduced me to a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, I uh, learned about the seminars about him and stuff like this. And uh, so um, okay. I explored the German Filipino martial arts, uh, or what's the word, community a little bit more. And um, I took took part at the right. WKF champion German championship in '95, and met some people <coughs> there and okay. made, made connections. And um, then I was introduced to Heinz Göres, who did a very interesting mix of Inosanto blend Kali. He actually, he was instructor under Dan Inosanto, but uh, he was a little bit under the radar. In okay. Germany, really. And um, he was a very good instructor, and he did a mix between Aikido, some JKD, kickboxing, and Inosanto Kali. And, uh, and he organized okay. seminars, uh, very interesting seminars. So he had, uh, an example, Bob Green on a regular basis in his school in Hanover. And uh, on one of the seminars, I met Krishna Gordanya of Warriors as Prima. Um, Toby, one can- Oh, yeah, 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 I met. 
And uh, just yeah, Tobias is in the, the house. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, I um, became a student of, of Krishna Rodanya and uh, also for quite a long time I uh, did Warriors as Prima, which is basically a blend of some Balinda work styles, a lot of Dosoparos, so the older Dosoparos stuff is in it. And um, it was, uh, yeah, it was a great time. But uh, then for personal reasons, we split up some, some, somewhere in time. And uh, yeah. I did my own thing for some <coughs> years. And um, then I, by a funny, funny coincidence, I met, met Master Sean. I, uh, I had a book of Mark Wiley, uh, Filipino Fighting Arts, one of those. And uh, there was a big article about Mang Ben, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lightning, the way how to teach it and, and whatever, and uh, the history of it. And um, there in this article, uh, he, there was a little part where he said there is a group in Germany. And I was just curious, and I because I thought, okay, I know almost everybody in Germany who does Filipino martial arts, but I mm -hmm. had never heard of them. So I asked asked around right, okay. in a German martial arts room, and uh, nobody knew. Later, I found out uh, mm -hmm. Mark mixed up Belgium and Germany. So um, the guy in Antwerp, oh, okay, he, he meant him, I guess. And um, so I, I, I can't remember his name now. Um, there's one okay. guy in Antwerp Belgium. Who, who was, yeah. And um, so um, some days later, I got a phone call from Sean and where he introduced him and he heard I was interested in, 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 in lightning. And um, yeah, it was just, mm -hmm. Funny, somebody told him, somebody in Germany is asking around for lightning. All right, okay. Okay. And, um, yeah. Uh, we talked a lot. We, we had a very nice phone conversation, and then it was clear for me that I have to go there and visit him. And um, mm -hmm. <laughs> this visit, I, I had some uh, one funny experience. Um, the the trip and my first visit was very chaotic we uh something was wrong with my flight i guess uh oh okay i was was a little bit late he picked me up he we drove to his house we practiced maybe two hours then one of his sons had an accident we drove to the hospital oh. and while we All were right. waiting we talked a lot and he told me a lot of stuff about lightning. And, but we didn't train that much. But he showed me uh, okay. most variations of Begaitama and methods of, manners of striking and, and stuff. And told me a lot of stuff about the theory behind <coughs> lightning. And uh, then the next day, something <coughs> else happened. I, I can't remember. We, we couldn't manage to really train. The, the second day as well, and uh, I I went back to Germany, and in my mind it was yeah, lightning is a nice style. Sean is a very nice guy, and but I didn't feel the need to change anything. Yeah, he's a very family. nice guy. And uh, mm -hmm. then some some days some days later, I had a sparring session in my school, and. Uh, I didn't realize really I, I did the rolling block <laughs> and um, then I had the, 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 the feeling that okay even if you had that few training something mm -hmm. sneak, <laughs> sneaked in my subconscious and I did a technique that, yeah, I, something snuck in. Barely, that I barely trained at this time so I felt oh there's something mm. into it yeah and uh, then I realized yeah. I have to explore more. And then the the next trip mm. went much, much better. And uh, we mm. got 
a, a, a good amount of training time. And uh, yeah, since then I try yeah. to to visit Sean whenever possible. Yeah. And um, mm. some years later, he he um, he took me with him to the Philippines, which was really a great experience. Uh, it was my first time in the Philippines, and um, another guy uh, from Frankfurt, Frankfurt area, Joe, and and me, we Joe, went to the Philippines. Uh, Joe Brandt. Yeah. Yeah, there's a big guy. You, yeah. I, I, you know him. You know him. Um, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I know him. I know him. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, yeah, we really had a great time there. And uh, uh, I, I, I very often I think about this time, and I want to be there again. <laughs> it was really a great experience. And uh, mm. yeah, and this is. So far, this is my 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 Filipino martial arts background. Yeah. If I didn't forget anything, John. Yeah. Well, we'll. Yeah. Well, we'll. Yeah. We'll. We'll get deeper into that one. So, like, uh, with your other martial arts training, okay. Yeah. What are the things that you managed to bring when you started Filipino martial arts, like attributes? Yeah, I think. Um, a lot of um, the, the, the natural movement of judo, and uh, don't be afraid to fall and do break falls. And uh, <clears throat> I think none of the martial arts I trained were wasted. Everything had some really good point. Yeah, even if, it, yeah, it's, um, if it's just uh, yeah. the, 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 the energy drills of Wing Chun, maybe. Uh, even if I always felt mm. that Wing Chun is not good for me, it's just my personal. I I, I never really liked it, really, uh, which is not to say something bad about Wing Chun. It's just for me, it wasn't the the, the right. Yeah, it, it 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 didn't resonate with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt much more comfortable in Thai boxing. Um, okay. But, um, yeah, I think everything had something good in it, really, to uh, to to um, to I, I bet. do something complete. Yeah. yeah, I bet you found your judo handy when you did the uh, club defense of uh, lightning Cell. Yeah, 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 and it. Uh, as far as I understood, the, 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 <coughs> the, really the source of the club assaults are not that clear, but it really looks very Japanese to me. Mm. Yeah. The Japanese <coughs> is a Filipino touch. But, uh, but I like them very much. Yeah. I, I, uh, uh, at first, it feels strange because it looks strange, but it's a lot, a lot into it, really. Mm. Well, I mean, if you if you trace it, um, Mang Ben, before uh, before El Sai, he was also yeah. more of like a judo 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 boy judo guy. Okay. okay. So he was actually even called judo Ben. And when yeah. he was serving yeah. in, in uh, Guam, and un, uh, under the Yusafe. Your 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 picture stuck. I guess the connection is not good. Can you still hear me? No. Oh. Yeah, I can still hear you. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you again. It was. Uh, yep. You got disconnected. I guess. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, 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 I was I was yeah, saying that uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, because uh, Mang Ben has uh, has background in judo, and even when he was like teaching, uh, when he was uh, stationed in Guam, under the Yusafe, he was he was one yeah. of the he was one of the combat instructors there, and he teaches like okay. both uh, lightning scientific and 
combat judo at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I think because we have we have a a storm as well here in the UK. Might be the uh, my internet connection um, uh, was was lagging earlier on. So yeah. Um, you know, it is it's one of the things that I enjoyed as well when when I met Elmer. <clears throat> so it's like when he was showing me the club defense, I was like, oh, I I'm familiar with that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's 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 really nice. Okay, so um let's show them a picture and see basically try to describe this picture that you sent me. Okay. You can you can yeah. you can talk about it. I'm gonna lower myself down first. It's uh this was my first uh screamer group. This picture is around 91, 92, and um I'm the guy in the middle, I still have hair kneeling kneeling in the middle. And uh yeah, it was was a great group and um I'm still in contact with that instructor and um so we write from time to time, and uh, yeah, this was my 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 beginning in FMA. <laughs> Carl yeah, said German German boy band. German boy band. Yeah, we looked a little bit like uh, Backstreet Boys. That's really yeah. Is this uh, with Warrior Screamer? No, uh, this was La Tosa Screamer. Alatosa, okay, all right, okay, okay. <clears throat> I didn't found any warriors pictures. I don't know why. That's I, I didn't find any. Okay, all right, okay. And this this picture so. even is very rare because we didn't have uh, digital cameras. Uh, it's uh, this picture is um, uh, um, oh, I'm lacking the word at the moment. Um, it belongs to my first Screamer instructor. It's his picture, and he sent me a copy. So um, okay, right. <clears throat> okay, and the next one is uh, your picture with <coughs> Master Sean. This was un under the tree at Sean's house in his garden, uh, where he does his cl his classes. If the weather is right, and. Um, I'm just gonna hide myself first so that basically people will see it much better. I uh, don't know the, the the year actually, but I'm much thinner than now. And uh, yeah, it's Master Sean, of course, me, a former student of mine. And then I I think it's Phil, Paul, and uh, I forgot the name of the last one. Maybe also a Paul. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it was. It was and is or will be very nice to uh, train at Master Sean's place. Uh, it's yeah, it's very uh, great training with a small group of people. I know he 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 doesn't he doesn't run a like a class per se. No, no, no. But basically, he runs this uh, like sort of like garage training every Saturday. Backyard backyard training, yeah, and it's 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 really great his uh, students are teaching in clubs some of them yeah some of them now yeah like carl is already yeah. teaching now uh, paul is teaching now and he's also into lightsabers yeah so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lightsaber guy and uh, yeah so um sean really loves it that way as as i understood him he uh he likes to 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 train people that have some background. <clears throat> mm. So um, so, what are the, um, I would say, your fond memories learning with learning under under Master Sean, also like, um, I would say, unforgettable moments. Oh, there are, there are a lot of unforgettable moments, but I can't talk about them. <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, it, it's it's always special to train with him because um, you can ask him 
literally everything and he has an answer and um, he has, I, I guess he has a photographic memory. So um, sometimes he's, he's like a tape recorder. You ask him, can you show me this and this technique again? And uh, he knows exactly what you mean and can reproduce the technique again and again. So I guess we are disconnected again. Somebody in the chat, can you still hear me? Yeah, I'm back now. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I'm back now. Yeah, sorry. No problem. <coughs> I'm, yeah, we're really having. I don't know if the audience can still hear me if you get kicked out. No, the the show is still there. Okay, so I I just keep talking then. Yeah, you, yeah. If if that happens, just keep talking. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. yeah but... So um, I just uh, said it's it's um, um, it's always very special to train with Master Sean because um, you can ask him literally anything and he has an an answer and he has mm. um, like a photographic memory, I guess. So um, he's like a tape recorder. Yeah, you can ask him. You showed me a technique three years ago. Um, it was a little bit like that. Can you repeat it? And then he knows. He knows what technique you mean, and he does it exact the same. Like it's um, it's very seldom that uh, that uh, you have people like that. So it's it, it's really. Um, and I never met Mang Ben, but everybody tells me he moves exactly like him. As, yeah, yes, he does. Every everybody that, does. Uh, that knew both says he is uh, like a copy. Uh, in, in, he in, does. He in, does. He does. Movements. So um, yeah, yeah. It's like he is the British version of Mang Ben. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, also, but and, and, um, <coughs> much more important for me, he's also a friend. So uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah on a personal level. Due to some personal issues, I wasn't able to come to the UK for, I guess, six years or something like that. And mm -hmm. uh, then when I mm -hmm. came back to that, on that gathering we had, 2017, I guess. Uh, oh, yeah. It, it was really like coming home, like I would have been there every year. So it's, um, I, I, I feel we have a good connection to each other and uh this was yeah this one yeah yeah we had yeah. we this was your place right it was yeah at your place when uh the breakfast training this this master john yes <laughs> one of the best training breakfast training it was great it was really great we have we're very mm. lucky with the weather as well and you, you, oh yeah you, definitely you did the filming and john took really time to, 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 mm. to carry me through the Espada Laga. Yeah, and, um, that's true. And this is, this is one that's thing true. I, I uh, really like about lightning. It's, it's really, really like a family. Yeah. So you, um, uh, even if we met only a short time before it, uh, felt like we would know each other since a long time. And um, yeah, so it's it's really uh, I like the, the the atmosphere and that people uh, even if they have different teachers, they share the same ideas and have uh, similar goals. And uh, just uh, to, as if it's 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 said very often, but. Um, so people say it's like that, but I feel in, in lightning, it's really, it is like this. It's the main concern is to spread the art and keep it yeah. alive and yeah, save, save it to further generations. And Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We have to keep the legacy of Mang Ben yeah. and, um, <clears throat> for the future generation. And plus, especially now that I think... <clears throat> There are only three remaining grandmasters in lightning that uh, was under Mang Ben for a long period of time. Okay. So we we need to make sure that we 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 manage to get that legacy going and 
try to do something as well for the future generations of lightning yeah 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 okay this next picture is this in the philippines yeah this was uh, i guess 2008 or 2007 and uh, it was uh, as he called it in that time uh, google john sunday school it was yeah uh, in a park UP. in a park at UP. <coughs> and uh yeah as, as, as a european i wasn't used to the humidity and the and the the heat also it, oh, was, no. it was only 30 degrees or something so i i, yeah. I think i drank six liters of water <laughs> during that training oh did you yeah yeah you, you, you was, definitely need to yeah you have to it was a great, to. it was really a great training session and also uh very nice people and we were very lucky that uh john was by coincidence he was in the philippines at the same time because he already shifted to Israel then. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, um, yeah, during the time, yes. And also um, the guy on the left, I think he moved to Canada or to the US. Um, I'm not sh sure. That... So it was a big co coincidence that all the people were there at that moment. And um, oh, that was great. And after the training, we were at uh, Chocolate Kiss. This, uh, one of the best burgers I ever had. And um, yeah, it was great, it was great. And I'm not sure if it was the same day. I think we uh, joined the master's council after that, or oh. on one of these days. And um, yeah. yeah, it was great, it was really great. And it was, for me, it was the first time to see the different approaches to lightning. Because before mm -hmm. I knew Sean, and there I also met uh, Mang Romy Santos and Master Nathan Dominguez. And mm -hmm. um, you can see it's the same style, but everybody has its own taste. And um, <coughs> yeah, this, this was really great to see this. Because mm, I think that's true. this is, uh, in stuff like that, you see it's really a style. Because you see yeah. the the generation of power is the same yeah. or similar and the yeah. ideas are the same and um, it's not so overloaded with we have this drill from that system and this drill and this drill but we have this certain yeah. strikes and methods to drills and this is the core and everything else is uh, yeah. yeah so um, <clears throat> this is what I really like like about lightning because before um, I uh, I didn't practice styles, but training methods. Yeah, so okay, like you in in Boris, it's a streamer, an example. You had it was very good. It produced good martial artists, good fighters. If people wanted to fight, it could prepare you for. We we joined the gather the gathering, an example. So, um, but it was. Um, by definition, it was this exercise, this drill is from an example, the mm -hmm. This Our Espada Daga was mostly from Carlos Illustrissimo and a little bit, okay. bit of Momois stuff, also prepping the stick and knife. So it yeah. was a, a mix from different styles. So um, sometimes you couldn't see the red line so clearly. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, with lightning, it was in the same times that you that I uh, had the, the experience um, that okay, you do this with a stick, you do exactly the same with the hand, not technique wise, but mm. from the standpoint of of body mechanics. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Of course, it's yeah. a difference if you have a stick <coughs> or a knife or a blade. Or, it 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 is a difference, of course. Yeah, there's there's slight differences, yeah. but you got generally yeah. you got the same body and, mechanics. Um, yeah. And this 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 uh, was one thing that fascinated me in the beginning and still fascinates me. And um, also that you can um, by just repeating the routine, sometimes it clicks and you have a new idea. It clicks. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is this this is. What I really like about, and that you can express yourself in it, 
as soon as you don't change the roots, the body mechanics, and yeah, so yeah. it fits into yeah. the into the system, and then it will work. Yeah, and um, that's that's what I really like. And um, yeah, I think uh, lightning still had this changes that some styles had by getting bigger. Yeah, so uh, it's still very simplistic, but not easy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, uh, I agree. That's, that's, I agree. that's what I what I really <coughs> like about it. And. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and and. Uh, um, oh, I I I lost the. Uh, Huh. You know, you were you were you were saying earlier on that um, after doing some lessons with Master Sean, especially the rolling block. Yeah. Then when when you when you went for a was it a sparring or a competition? No, it was a, just a, a friendly sparring in school. Friendly spar, but basically it came out. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, I think. Um, and at this time, I I had seen it once. And maybe did it 20 times. And Sean explained me why to do it and everything. Yeah. But, um, I didn't practice it really at, at this time. And just some days later, it just came out. By, and I was like, what, what did I do? And then I, OK, it was this movement. It was a rolling block, yes. And I said, OK, if, if it gets so deep in that short amount of time, there has to be something in it uh, that that speaks to me, and yeah. mm. that's true. And, um, that's true. Um, uh, I had this experience once with a movement from Taiji, where I uh, did some Hubert-like training, and I did some, <laughs> by coincidence, really some form movements of of Taiji. Where just okay, what what's that? Yeah. So some I, I, I think some type some styles are good for some people. And if you find yeah. a style that fits for you, stuff like this happens. That's yeah. true. That's very true. And um, yeah, I think there's one there's one pushing hand of Taiji yeah. that is similar to the rolling block. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. when you yeah. yeah, so when you basically accept the, the incoming force. You redirect out, and then yeah. you you basically like push yeah. as well. So yeah, you get you have some similar movement. Yeah, and um, yeah, and and, and this, um, that's what I like. And um, uh, alas, I can't do that much sparring anymore f uh, due to some health reasons. And uh, I <coughs> um, I met Sean after i went to the gathering i would be very curious oh yeah dog brothers yeah yeah and um we in preparation for the dog brothers we did a lot of sparring and open sparring meetings with different schools and um i would be interested how it would have changed if i would have known lightning then but yeah i don't know um because I think some, especially, especially uh, Big Eye Tama is a, such a great exercise because it's, yeah, actually. it's like, like pet work in Thai boxing. And um, uh, maybe some of my future students will find out if, <laughs> how, how, it, how it changes the game in, in the... Nah. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, the Big Eye Tama is really, uh, well, besides it's... Uh, one of the unique um, set of tools in training tools in lightning it's uh it's one of the it's one of the training tools out there that allows you to experience yeah experience the the the, the intention yeah. the range the power behind the strikes um in almost like a control but 100 percent yeah 100 yeah, percent way in a controlled way so yeah I, yeah, I I do remember like um 
talking to some people here who, who does would who, who do fma as well and they said they want they want they want to learn sparring okay i said i told them okay one way one safe way for you to learn sparring to understand range is basically through this uh training tool the big tama yeah. of course they never heard about it and it was like it was uh um um it was something that it it kind of took them a while to grasp it yeah <coughs> and but, but yeah. It's, um it's also what i like about it it's um it trains both people and sometimes it does in I a have, mutual progression yeah. I, I i i have the feeling that you learn even more as a feeder yes exactly but, and uh, because you can work on your feints and everything and yeah um, exactly uh, yeah you can learn how you, you learn how to set up as yeah, well yeah, yeah. you learn you learn basically how to zone your 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 opponent or basically your receiver yeah. and play around with it a little bit more so yeah so yeah it's 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 a good tool basically to 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 learn and you, so learn, you, learn, one, you learn how to use your left hand you learn how to work exactly two, how to work with two sticks um, yeah exactly and it's 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 really a great exercise or mm. espade daga if you are the carrier for espade daga bigai tama <coughs> you learn how to use this thing yeah <laughs> that's very true yeah that's very true yeah okay and, um, this is also I, i i think it's a specialty of of lightning maybe uh It, it is that the that the the espada daga is really alive. It's not mm. oh then we have espada daga the complicated stuff that we do later on and do on demonstrations. Mm. No, it's working basics. Yeah, uh, exactly. And um, exactly. Okay, let's show this next picture. Oh yeah, this was uh, the one, and at the moment only seminar um, of master john and we want to repeat it both of us wants want to do this again but uh, then came corona and um, as soon as possible we will have uh, we will have this again it was really great um, besides the seminar which was great i think all the participants enjoyed it uh, John stayed for a while, and uh, I had a lot of training with him, and a lot of interesting discussions and some. I, I really value his his insights and his ideas and uh, uh, his approach to to, to lightning. Um, yeah, and um, and he's just a great guy, and um, we had. Yes, he is, he is, he's he's very supportive yeah, actually, and we had. It's very supportive. Very much fun on that seminar, and uh, yeah, as soon as possible. Uh, and I will spread the news I'll... here, so everybody's welcome, of course. That... Of course. Mm -hmm. Well, hof hopefully, that by the time that you manage to bring John there, I'll be able to join as yeah, well. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, it, 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 it was really great. He um, showed us some of his approach. Um, The lightning combatives and uh, his, yeah. um, his easier, more modern way uh, to get people interested. And mm. I copied a lot of it. Oh, the, oh that's brilliant. As, uh, <coughs> as, as much as I like the traditional approach, some mm -hmm. stuff, uh, if you Some of the traditional stuff, it's great if you have uh, one teacher, three students, it's yeah, it's great, it's yeah. great. and then it's the best, the best way to learn, really. But yeah. um, some stuff is not possible if you have a group of people. Yeah, it's, it's just it's, That's it's true. basically not possible. So you have to do That's true. you have to have some exercises that they can do at your own while you concentrate on one of them. And then yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, and this, I, I mean, as a as a as a teacher, you have to be able to adjust yeah to the needs of your your class basically yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, and sometimes it's a tough job basically trying to balance it. But 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. always it's always an act of balance, really. Yeah. To uh, not to. It's 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 one of the big words. Not to water it down, but to to keep the essence. But have everybody occupied and everybody has to learn something. And, yeah, exactly. And, exactly. Uh, I, 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 I hope we are doing a good job with that. And um, but I'm quite confident that uh, we will that we, we, we are on the right track. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, so um, when did you start? Um, or when did you open a school in Germany? Oh, um, I think uh, quite early. But uh, because I had to, I had to. My uh, the 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 teacher who did this in in a Santo Aikido mix, he was in Hannover, which is two hundred fifty kilometers from my place. Uh, okay, I was just seventeen, eighteen, something like that, and I uh, drove there once a month, twice a month by train, and then he had. Some he called it instructor training. So the instructors of his school were there, and I trained. But I needed training partners at home, so I mm. opened a group in a fitness studio where I also did Muay Thai, and uh, so I was a student, and I still consider myself as a student. And uh, but I learned and teached at the same time, which was. Some, somehow a good way, because you have to be, mm. as you know, uh, you have to be mm. more independent. But sometimes yeah. it would have been nice to have a teacher to just ask. But on the other hand, you, you had to practice and to memorize. And uh, That's I true. did a lot of experimenting in that time, which I still have some... Uh, once you make this experience, it, it stays with you and it, it helps you. And um, so a lot of the problems students may have, I know from first-hand experience. So sometimes I have a solution. And um, uh, I would do it again <laughs> each time. So um, I had, I think, my first group really in 94, 95, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a, I had a Latosa as Crema training group, but in this group, okay. we were more or less on our own. And uh, I visited some seminars and I started to throw in stuff there all the time and started to experiment. And um, then I left this organization and uh, mm -hmm. did some, I think, modern anis at the same time I did the uh, Innocento blend. And uh, yeah, okay. and then when I met Krishna, I already was an instructor on my own of my own group. So I learned various Eskrima and was teaching at the same time. And then somehow, somehow later, I became. A, instructor and what, what, whatever the titles were there. Um, so it was more or less a parallel uh, way. Join, yeah. yeah. A parallel joining. Uh, yeah. Because I, I wouldn't have any other chance to uh, to have regular training. So I needed my students as mm. <laughs> I think most of us. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's also how I um I am with my group yeah. in the UK. So you need to be able to 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 develop students who will eventually become your training partner. Yeah, yeah. Um and hopefully surpass your, your skills and everything. So yeah. Yeah. We 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 yeah. And um yeah, this this is my uh, part of my actual group at the moment, and when I reopened this group after the first lockdown we had, uh, I decided to implement uniforms, 
And uh, okay, so that's yeah, that's uh, really important. It's, as far as I see now, it was a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, especially in Germany, we we have it with uniforms. Every, every yeah, because it yeah, builds a good presence yeah. and camaraderie amongst yeah, your students. Yeah, yeah. and um, of course, the T-shirt is it's my logo, which I had made by a designer. I like it. And then I stole the idea of the red trousers from Um Or otherwise, I was looking around what to do, what to do, what to do, and uh, I actually I found the, the red pants were a good idea because uh, I saw some of the older Lightning Masters also had them and so, red. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the color from Ben, yeah. red and white. And um, yeah, I, I decided to go for black shirts. And so yeah. the, the, because they are easier to manage, easier to, 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 to clean and to handle and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's very true. And, that's very true. Uh, I, that's very true. I, I still have <laughs> one of the original white shirts, of course, and I it's honored and separate in my wardrobe and <laughs> from time to time I wear it. Um, yeah, and um, we had the, the, the belt system I developed together with with Master Carl. Okay. And uh, we had the belts for quite a while, but then I decided, okay, now we start to wear them as well. And um, I, I, I had a lot of time to think during the, the lockdown. Uh, and I want to, it, it, I feel it has to look, look more like a martial art to get mm. people interested in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's um, from, from, from the outside. Sometimes you have the feeling, oh, they don't even they, they, they even don't have a black belt. It's not a real martial art. And um, uh, I decided to try it now that way. And um, <coughs> so far, it was a good decision. So, um... Did you lose students from pre-COVID to post-COVID? Not, not, not really. Uh, as usual, you you lose a student from time to time because his life changes, whatever. Mm. Uh, but no, no. But I, I can't really tell because I opened this group. Yeah. Three months later, COVID came. We reopened. Then we were closed down again. And then we reopened. So I, I know it's like I yo yo. I really tell because in the same time I moved and closed another school. So I, I can't really tell. But I have the feeling that I didn't lose anyone except okay. the new people that couldn't come. Yeah, and maybe now they play squash or whatever. Um, but um, we did in the second lockdown visit, we did Zoom training. Oh, yeah, I was about to ask that one. So you did Zoom, did le Zoom, Zoom lessons. lessons, which worked much better than, than I expected. Uh, sometimes it was frustrating because you explain something, you do something, and you know you only have to touch that student once and say, do it like this, and then he or she would know. But it wasn't yeah. possible. But um, all the, the necessary solo training that sometimes you don't do oft enough, uh, often enough in group to me. Oh yeah. Now mm. it was the only stuff we could do. And everybody was bored and didn't have alternatives to training. So they joined the Zoom meeting. And uh, it, it, was, it wasn't that bad really. And, uh, Ah. And of course, I, mean, I, you I, I, missed, I missed to hit real people, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice way of putting that, man. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, it worked. It worked. And um, yeah, I, I did. I did uh, Zoom training as well with my guys du during the pandemic because I mean, there's you 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 have to be able to like help them yeah. retain 
at least the basic skills than the foundation. So this that's what and, we did. Um, I think everybody learned the methods there mm. in the time. Um, yeah. Just excuse me for a second. I'll be back. Okay, cool. I'll be back very soon. All right. Okay, so guys, while uh, while Christian is out, let me remind you, we're going to have the FMA discussion Christmas raffle this coming uh, Sunday, December 12, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Tickets are five bucks and uh, the proceeds will go to charity in the Philippines. Okay, so if you haven't bought your tickets yet, uh, please contact Dean Franco for it. And we do have exciting prices. Okay. And once again, Grandmaster uh, Bram Frank donated uh, two of his um, famous uh, tools or toys. Okay. So, and Brian, Guru Brian is going to, to donate as well. Uh, uh, <clears throat> is this a, a trainer? And uh, GM... Ray Floro, I think a a volume one of one of his uh, DVD lesson. So um, if you haven't bought your tickets yet, please um, contact Dean. And I think Christian is already back. Yeah, I'm back. So there you go. Yeah. Um, so I, I I hope we don't have to do it again. But Zoom training is better than nothing. Exactly. And, um, I have exactly. Uh, some friends in the UK. Um, they um, are in Scotland somewhere. Uh, it's a karate club. And uh, sometimes I do Zoom training with them, which is great. Yeah. And um, yeah, actually, the, the Zoom lessons actually paved way to a lot of people managing to train with with um, uh, teachers or masters that they would like to train with, but because of the distance um, constraint, yeah. they can't. So at least with Zoom, they manage to, they, they do have time training. Yeah, I, I think we now as instructors have to be careful that this doesn't become normal training. It can't, uh, um, <clears throat> it's, it's not, um, what's the word? Um, yeah, um, it's necessary to have real training. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, it's just an addition. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's 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 it, it could be like a temporary measure. Yeah, and I, I to think be it, able to address a certain uh, situation. But it, yeah, you need to. It can be great. I think if you already have the basics. Yeah. And then at least you have some training. I think as a complete beginner, it can be quite dangerous to to start like this because sometimes you just need the direct control of somebody who yeah. knows. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are certain things that you'll be able to address in Zoom less Zoom training, but or Zoom Zoom lessons, but not all so you still need to have that face-to-face -face feedback yeah yeah we do with the partner okay um we have a question from tobias what is the most important skill for you to train to progress in lightning scientific yeah i think um i just read this question and already started to think about it uh, all right i think one of the things that you lose the fastest is timing. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't practice with a partner, you don't spar, uh, you still have some hitting power and everything, but the timing is gone like this. And um, I think that's true. Big Aitama receiving or feeding is a great way to practice timing. And um, yeah. depending on, on what stage you are also the training of serada is great for timing um mm. i think this is really this is the the most or well, the most important attitude that i personally train in, in, in yeah lightning. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. It's 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 really important to understand the balance between power and, and timing as and well. footwork and positioning. Yes, especially, exactly. But especially it's in Serra especially if you do it as Barre Daga, uh, the positioning and as well as the timing, but positioning and the footwork. And this is also this is yeah. one thing I realized in some styles they have twenty footworks and one footwork that they actually use. And uh, the few footworks that we have, they are <laughs> in every basic exercise and they are exactly yeah, yeah. like you use them. And then, uh, yeah. this is, uh, this should be normal, but in my experience in a lot of styles, I think it's the way FMA came to Germany through seminars, yeah? Somebody heard, oh, you have to have a triangle. Oh, they have this triangle. We have this time, we use both. Yeah. <laughs> and um, ha, you get the female yeah, male triangle. And, um, I think in a lot of style, it happens that people just collected footworks. Yeah. Not, not the original styles, but the people like me that had to grasp it from seminars. And. Um, mm. This is what I really like very much in Lightning. You have these few foot footworks, you use them. But it's yeah. well used. And, um, yeah. Even if I'm not the receiver in Serrata, but I feed, I have to position myself. You use I, them as well, yeah. Uh, as a teacher, you are in the luxurious position. You can explain it again and again and again. And with every explanation, it sinks a little bit deeper, <coughs> and you uh, you see what you are really doing there. You don't do yeah, that's very Don't true. do technique A B C. You do this technique because you are in that position, and you want to get in this position, or you want to have yeah. your opponent in that position. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really it's really important that as a teacher you manage to explain the context of why you do things. Yeah. Otherwise, they become a collection of technique, yeah. and they won't be able to apply it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, okay. Uh, we've got another question here from Uwe. Uh, one is, what's going on with lightning scientific Chinese? Nice? I'm not really sure what Uwe means about this. Uh, I, uh, I I already talked with him about this question. Um, oh, I see. Okay. He. Uh, he uh, wants to know how good the club is running, and uh, oh, all right, okay. And it's 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 few people. It's still FMA, but uh, it's yeah. It's after the last lockdown, it's running at the moment. It's running better than accepted, ex expected. Oh, that's so, brilliant. Yeah. That's good. And, that's good. Um, so um, it's still it's only a few people, but. Uh, I think if everybody shows up, we are about ten people, which is that's good. Quite a good group for FMA in Germany. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, yeah, that's still a good number. Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah and, and even if there's only one, yeah, it's I I have to teach it. <laughs> it's it's a mission. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. good. All right. <clears throat> Next one is, uh, what, what about your Owen brand basic knife defense? Yeah, it, um, this was um, as an explanation. It was uh, the trial to have a, a small system of knife defense, where I um, okay. put, uh, most of the stuff that, that I did at this time was from Warriors Streamer. Which is basically the, the combat judo stuff of the different of the power branches. Yeah, you have an knife defense there, and um, one big part in Warriors Eskrima was uh, projectiles. So um, mm -hmm. we did some knife throwing, but more of the idea: uh, you have your mobile phone at hand, you're getting attacked, you throw it. Yeah, or. Uh, grab something and throw it. And as, okay. as easy as this idea is, it has to be practiced. So um, it, I yes. 
anything any anything that you want to be able to do outside in the street yeah. you have to practice and it so it was a set of seminars uh, which i called basic knife defense so the, All right, the okay. first part was how to get away how to distract an aggressor throw something at him run away um, the next stage was you have an improvised weapon like an umbrella or whatever or you had pepper spray so um, <coughs> and with with each progression it was getting worse for the defender so the last stage would be okay. you are being attacked with a knife you can't get away you don't have a weapon and um, the idea was and it worked quite good for a while um, the idea was to have one module of the seminar every two months and once you run through it there's a short test and then you can teach it on your own uh, not because uh, you were unbeatable but because it was so easy yeah so and yeah. if you had some martial arts background you could teach it after that seminars and um, then you would repeat the seminars as you like to stay into it and uh, actually I don't really know what happened it yeah I, I, I had I had a divorce and all that stuff yeah so I had some personal issues all right okay. somehow I guess really I forgot about it or it, 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 it died <laughs> it uh, but, um, <coughs> yeah so this is this this one is meant more for like a, yeah, as yeah. a self-defense similar like the problem okay. you did with a knife you you yeah. all right oh, oh yeah okay like okay, that, okay, yeah? okay okay just how to survive edged weapons <laughs> yeah but um and uh i think Uwe is is, is uh talking me into it <laughs> talking me into it again <laughs> so let's let's see what I, Why not? I, 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 don't, I don't really Why know not? it um, um, so uh, yeah what happened to it the founder forgot about it and <laughs> and it died um, but um, yeah and, and, and just to to make this point clear it, it, it wasn't meant to be as a martial art but just it was a, the name of this set of seminars that should enable people to mm -hmm. teach something to uh yeah to basically survive a knife attack and yeah um, i I, yeah, I i in the in germany at this time it was very modern to do some knife stuff and kill 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 with a knife and I, I i hated it i hated this approach because for me a knife is not a self-defense weapon yeah it's your last chance if, if you have to use it yeah but it, it's not the best choice not for defending yourself yeah but um i once i did a seminar we uh, we rented a, a house in the woods <laughs> and it was about four days or something like that and i had a, a medic there who did some first aid and i had a, a real lawyer that uh, explained us the law. What explained because the there's law, yes. so much, especially in, 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 in this field, there's so much bullshit out from expert. And I'm not a legal expert. I know some knife techniques, yeah. But I never killed somebody with a knife. I do martial arts, which includes knives, but I'm not an expert for legal advice how to uh, how to defend yeah so i uh, took a lawyer into into it i want to to wanted to uh, give it a little bit more further wrong that's that's actually one of the one of the best way to do it if you run a seminar because by by having a lawyer there it actually gives better perspective for your participants yeah as far as uh what is uh what is proportional yeah. uh or you what is a proportional yeah proportional use of force how how would you basically 
uh, be in if you if you use a a, a weapon yeah. against somebody. And so yeah, it's it's really important. I wanted to to have this in the real world and not in our martial arts fantasy world. Yeah, so uh, that's true. And I, and I'm basically I'm glad that you're 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 uh, you're also in that kind of way of thinking. Yeah, yeah. And um, so yeah. So um, yeah, this this I hope this answers the question regarding to knife defense uh, to basic knife defense. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Uwe just said also first aid. Yep. Um, that that is also good because it's part of uh, post uh, post intervention or post invention yeah. or postvention. Something like that. You need to be able to learn how to uh, manage catastrophic bleeding or stop the bleed. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't know. You if you get cut, you have to know how to how to how to basically um, deal with it. Yeah, as well. if if it's just the basic knowledge that if you have a knife sticking into you, you don't remove yep. it. Don't put. Yeah, yeah, don't remove it. Yeah. yeah, and which part of your body that you can use tourniquet on? Which part of your body that you can use direct pressure on? So it's 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 really important at one point as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. Tobias has another question here. Which styles, which styles you had a look in FMA and non FMA? Yeah, I think Christian went through it a little bit earlier on. Yeah, but but this is uh, this were only the styles that I actually practiced for a while, and um, I. Basically, I looked into everything that I could found in my area or came across, um, which often means just had a look at class. Yeah? But um, uh, so I, I, I did. I did Taiji, and this teacher, as often in Chinese martial arts, also did Jing Yi and Bagua of the same family, but. Um, I didn't do enough to say I trained Bagua. I just, they had some exercises of it in the style. Mm -hmm. So um, then um, I restarted karate during during one of right. the lockdowns uh, because you, we were allowed to practice in the park without touching. So we uh, did a lot of kata and yeah. stuff. Um, and I see a lot of similarities there to the, the, the empty hand movements. And it's also the, the power is coming from the hip. And it's, it, it, I have to say it fits much better to most FMA than Wing Chun, for an example. Yeah, because the, 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 the power generation is the same. Power the same. generation, yeah. And more or less the same footwork. Yeah. And um, yeah, what, what else did I do? Um, of course, I cross train with Tobias as as often as possible. Um, he's a grandmaster of of Los Paris. He was a student of Kakoi, and uh, we, uh, we 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 chat very often. Uh, I visit him as much as possible. He visits me. We cross train. Do you do you live uh, close to each other? Only fifty kilometers. So. <laughs> Oh, okay. sticks will travel. Um, yeah, and um, I, I, I once I did also did uh, some uh, style that I regard as fantasy martial arts now. Uh, it was called Taiwan Do, not Taekwondo, but Taiwan. Taiwan, the Chinese state, Taiwan. They called it Taiwan Do. All right. <laughs> And it was it was some kind of karate. Okay. But um, all right. Okay. Uh, I'm 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 very sure I'm forgetting something. Uh, well, <coughs> when you remember them, um, just to let guys, just to let you know, next next Wednesday, uh, we're gonna have Grandmaster Tobias Ricker here. So um, he's he's going to be my guest next uh, next Wednesday for FMA discussion. Yeah. So and he is with uh, Kakoi Dose Paris. Yeah, and, uh, he has a lot yeah. of stuff to tell as well. He's, he's he's a great guy and a good friend, and so so I'm biased. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, ah, I forgot. Um, I did some 
I had a period where I did a lot of Italian knife fighting, which is uh, very interesting. Ah. very interesting. And um, for me, where did you where did you learn it from? A, a friend of mine, Roberto Laura, he learned it from a, who is a German Italian. Uh, he traveled to Italy, met somebody, learned it, started to explore, and so it started. And um, for me, it was at some point I had to make a decision because it differs in a big way sometimes. And they also have stick systems and they have knife systems. And um, for me, I had to make the decision, do I do it the Italian way or the Filipino way? And I just loved mm -hmm. FMA too much. I couldn't, I couldn't quit FMA. So um, I stopped uh, teaching the Italian stuff. Uh, and um, I still know something about it and I can teach some basic systems, but um, I stopped exploring. So uh, when I was learning from Roberto, he was still starting. So I guess this is 10 years ago or even more. So I yeah. guess he has much more knowledge now than he had before. So. Um, in Germany, he would be the, the person to, to go to, if you want to learn. To go to, all right, to okay. Learn it. <coughs> and um, it's very, some stuff is very similar to Filipino stuff because it's the same blade, it's mm. the same weapon. Yeah. But it's, sometimes I feel it's more to the point because there's not that much philosophy around it. It's just, you have a knife, kill him. Mm. <laughs> At least in my, view it, it stop, was stop. Uh, the time because uh, as far as I understood and learned and what I read from time to time of course they have philosophy as well which is most of it's it's yeah Catholic and some 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 voodoo with some saints uh, which protect you <laughs> yeah so um, uh, but I don't know enough about it to, to really say something about it. And um, I liked it, but I just uh, loved the Filipino stuff more. And it's, of course, you can do more than one martial arts, but I feel if they are too similar, it, it's, mm. yeah. Um, and, um, and sometimes it's, it's just, um, just in a feeling and I don't have proof of, but I sometimes I feel the Filipino knife stuff that we learn uh, especially the first years is not really that killing stuff for yeah for obvious reasons but um, yeah uh, that's true if you progress in the Filipino arts then it's very similar to the stuff that I saw in Italian arts. Then, of course, you have ones, to yeah. see uh, it's in Europe. We have thicker clothes. The weapon were designed were designed to yeah. slash, slash. So, of course, this has influence on the way of fighting. Yeah. And um, of in course. the Philippines, you have a T-shirt that cut the arm. A very good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, if exactly. You have a, Big leather jacket, exactly. you need to step. Yeah. So um Yeah, that's 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 what I tell my students as well in the class. So when 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 do you use the slashing yeah, yeah. actions and when do you um, use the stabbing actions? So and yeah, the, the the clothes is basically the clothes uh yeah. your your opponent is wearing is um is a is a yeah. heavy consideration. Um, so yeah <clears throat> i think uh Br brett has uh has a comment for you i don't know if you'll be able to pick it up there i think it would be very cool to spend the day with you sir i i only have a very strange translation of it so oh. i think the translation program 
mix it up. I, I can't really, I can't really understand the question. I have to say. No, it's. I think it's more of a comment. He was saying that it's very. It will be very cool to spend a day with yeah, you. Right. <laughs> Feel invited. Come over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he, so there you go. There's, there's some, you get an open invitation. There is um, something about Bagua, but I can't under, yeah. that I can't understand the question really because the translator mixed it up. Uh, what I meant with my comment to Bagua was in the Taiji style I learned, which was learned, which was the Sun style of Taiji they had some exercises of Bagua in it because yeah. their master Sun Mutang did as many of them did Taiji Chuan, Jingyi and Bagua. So we had some Bagua exercises, yeah, yeah. but it's not enough for me to say that I did Bagua. I just did some basic exercises of Bagua, but not the complete style. Yeah, that, that, that was what I wanted to express with it. Um, I, I guess Bagua, as any style, if you have the right teacher, can can be great, really. Yeah, but um, they had um, an example in this in this Taiji style, they had, uh, you also did a little bit of Jing Yi, but you only mm. did the, the standing posture. And, and yeah, embracing and the, 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 the five energies. And uh, but you didn't do all the rest of the Jimmy. You didn't do the partner forms and the application. And so I think the 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 the, the founder of this file <coughs> had the idea that you need some basics in the other arts to then mm. progress in in his Taiji. I, I think I think this was okay. his idea. So. There were just elements of the other styles uh, in it, yeah, like like in some FMA styles they do boxing. Yeah, yeah. To give a foundation for striking and everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, yeah. He 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 has some one more comment. The art is not brought up much, but it's unique at an individual that an individual blends it yeah. yeah it's true yeah you manage to blend it into your into your own for your own use as well <clears throat> yeah uh so have we missed something wait did we miss something <laughs> so when you were when you were like um establishing your school there in germany did you did you experience some challenges no not really from time to time, you have a strange guy walking in your school. Uh, basically, the worse they are, the better they think they, mm -hmm. they, they did. And uh, no, not friendly, friendly challenges. Yes, of course, that you say, can I, can I spar? And yeah, we had this a lot. But in a, friend, okay. in a friendly manner, in a friendly manner. But um, we didn't have this bad challenges that somebody assaults your club or something. No, no, we didn't have it. Just really okay. some some people that even uh, that either openly came to the school and said, "I want to spar with your guys," which was yeah. okay, or they joined um, a test training and behaved in a certain way that showed you, okay, maybe they need some sparring. Um, but really always in a friendly manner. Yeah. Oh, that's good. At least you didn't encounter any unwanted. No, 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 no. <coughs> yeah. We had some strange people, of course, but uh, it, it wouldn't be fair to talk about them now openly. <laughs> Yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think in, in, in martial arts, we are funny guys. Yeah, so of course we attract funny guys. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, um, 
Okay. Uh, I'm just I'm just trying to get the link to your website so I can post it in the yeah in the chat group. <clears throat> Shall I write it in the chat or? I I I'll, I managed to copy it from the okay, ones that okay. you sent me. Yeah. So I mean, <clears throat> um, depending on. The COVID situation. What are your future plans? Uh, I. Oh, sorry. Before you answer that. Yeah. Uh, uwe, uh, Krav Maga. Ah, okay. I, 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 um, I think he wants to know why I chose to teach Krav Maga. Um. All right. Okay. Uh. It's. I really think it's a good system to get somebody into self-defense. So um, in my experience, people that join a test training in Krav Maga are a completely set of pe different set of people that mm -hmm. join an FMA class. Uh, there you, sometimes you have real beginners that didn't do any martial arts in their life. Yeah? Um, and they want to learn how to defend themselves uh, and Krav Maga has some great solutions for it. Um, I think you have to differ. Uh, they don't get into the cage and fight at the next UFC, but yeah, that's somebody true. push them on the street or <coughs> put them into a, a, a neck hold or something like that, and they learn how to defend against that. Hit somebody and run away, and. Mm -hmm. This, almost everybody that joined that class had a better chance for that uh, after than, uh, than maybe after half a year. The chances are much better than before. Sometimes they are not great, but they are better. And um, mm. then, of course, my goal is to to get people that wouldn't join a martial arts class but get them interested via Krav Maga In and because yeah yeah it's 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 a course for self-defense so you join and either after two years you think okay now i got it it's enough for my needs you quit or you uh, get into martial arts and you think, okay, I want to train this more. And then you say, okay, maybe I start some kickboxing or, yeah. and of course I want to draw them into lightning. Yeah. And um, what I- That's the what, ultimate um, plan. <laughs> I, uh, <coughs> domination. Uh, <laughs> what I um, do at the same time now, I have some normal lightning class and, um, Actually, mm -hmm. John got me to the idea. Um, I teach a class once a week in this club, uh, which we call Krav Maga Stick and Knife Fighting. It's it's not a new martial arts. It's just the name of the of the class. Yeah. And the um, class, yeah, name of the class. I yes. teach uh, basically Filipino stuff with a stick, but with this Krav Maga mindset. Yeah, not in a way that okay, this develops your attribute and you really will have something about it in three years. Yeah, It's just like, okay, this works like this. You block, you hit, you do this, do this, and um, you do a little, lot of power training <laughs> and stuff like this. Um, and uh, of course, I want, if, if somebody... Uh, joins the Krav Maga class and then shows interest into into weapons or whatever, I can either say, okay, join my class on Thursday, or sometimes they say, I want to do more grappling. I can say there's a BJJ club, go there, and yeah, just to get people that normally wouldn't join martial arts. Yeah. And uh, I started, yeah. Yeah, it's a good I way, started, it's a good way to start them. I guess I started in 2016, where I, where I did a one-year right. 
education training to become a prop Maga teacher. And um, mm -hmm. if you are into the martial arts for a while, you will know the techniques. But um, the, they have great training you training routines and great ideas how to put you under stress and do the techniques. And um, uh, this, this, this I really, yeah. I really <laughs> like uh, about Krav Maga. Yeah, I think that's one thing. Yeah. That's one uh, one of the things that is good with Krav Maga. It basically allows you to yeah. uh, pressure test your skills. So basically, you can explore what uh, what the things things you can do can't do, uh, and be able to understand your strength and your weaknesses, yeah. Yeah. and develop yourself from there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, um, this I think this is. This yeah, about Krav Maga, and I, uh, I still teach it once a week in a mm -hmm. club in Mönchengladbach, which is close to Düsseldorf. And um, but um, yeah, it's, it's it's really really different people. Yeah, that that uh, that are interested in it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I don't know, uh, guys. Have you got any question yet? I just want to show them this. This is the first yeah, time we've yeah. met. This, I think, it was. <clears throat> That's in Luton. Seventeen, I guess, huh? Or sixteen? Fourteen? No. This must be earlier. This must be earlier yeah. still. No. This it, it's it's earlier than two thousand sixteen. Thirteen. Yeah, uh, yeah, something like yeah. that. Thirteen or twelve, something like that. Uh, uh, yeah. Before, <clears throat> before Uwe reminded us of the Krav Maga question, you had a question, and then you said, "Okay, before you answer this, let's." Ah, yeah. So, yeah. What are your plans? Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are your plans for your school? For your uh, in I, general? Um, yeah. Just before COVID crashed. Uh, I was planning a trip to visit John in Israel, and I still want to do this. And um, and I have to have to come over to the UK, really. And um, yeah, as soon as it's possible, without too much hassle because of the vaccination and all that stuff and the documents you need and everything. And um, I know. Yeah, I, I want to go visit uh, Sean again, very urgent. And uh, also I want to meet with Carl. And uh, may maybe he will come over uh, next week, <laughs> something like that. He, um, he, uh, he said he wants to visit me in December, which is now. So um, I have to recheck with him. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, these are my martial arts plan for the future and uh yeah basically keep teaching keep moving uh yeah i i, I want to keep i want to um, but really after COVID, i want to have a big fma seminar in germany with this uh, wow looking forward to that man as possible and I still have some some teachers that volunteered for it, and uh, it will be for charity. But I don't know for which. Until now, we still have to decide. Um, I don't want to go into planning until this COVID stuff is over, because yeah, it's I, it's, it's uh, hard. Man. It's, it's, hard. it's really hard, yeah. meant to be as a seminar. This COVID bullshit is over. We can restart again. So it has to be over before. Yeah, and um, yeah, the main aim is at this seminar we work together as FMA, no politics, doesn't matter which style. And um, be Karl, as well said, he will uh, join as a teacher. And um, I, um, I think most of the teachers are from Germany because I have to minimize the cost 
Yeah, because um, of course I will mm -hmm. pay the travel expenses for the teachers, but um, we can't pay anything else, and we will decide together to which charity it goes. And um, because I, I have the feeling, especially in the last years in Germany, the FMA community is drifting apart. Uh, we don't have something like you have in, in the UK with the British Council and you do the seminar every yeah. year and everybody shows up. Uh, it's, in Germany, it doesn't work really. It doesn't work, it doesn't work anymore. Maybe you can start it. In the past. And... Uh, Okay. I, I, I hope maybe I you hope can cite something. The spirit again into the people that they see different styles and different teachers. And I, I think uh, to to promote the Filipino arts more and don't be some something you add on if you have the time. But we are a real martial art. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's yeah very important that. We work together, especially to the outside. To the outside, and um, That's true. I think I'm in the past. Sometimes I was uh, also guilty of being too tribal about it, and I think it's into all of us. But at the moment, uh, I think <clears throat> it doesn't matter which style somebody. Is. As as long as we get people interested in Filipino martial arts. Everybody wins, yeah, and um, mm. yeah. But I, I, I think part of the problem is you start doing Filipino martial arts because you are an individualist. Yeah, you, you, you are a little bit special, and you want to do something different than other people. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. So. It, it will never be possible, I guess, yeah. to get the whole community together. Uh, and I think that, that the diversity I mean, is good. I, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that we. Yeah, you might you might not be able to get the whole of the community, but at least if yeah. there are some people and, um, who would like to do it, I mean, definitely there will be some yeah. there will be some instructors, especially if it is for charity. I mean, count me in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yes, Uwe, like 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 Y Day, something like that. Uh, the Y Day was um, some kind of martial arts Woodstock in Germany, which ah. uh, a friend of us did every year. I think for ten years, fifteen years or so, until he couldn't do it anymore because of a lot of work, and uh, it was um, a big seminar at the Rhine. And like a festival, people came with their tents, and so and so it was uh, training during daytime and a little bit of alcohol abuse during night, and uh, it was fun all the time. And uh, I think maybe I met Uwe there the first time, actually. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And um, this was great, but this wasn't. Only FMA. It was every every martial art set. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> if you could find an instructor who would give lessons for beer, he would go there and uh, <laughs> yeah. And it, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll settle for root beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was nice. It was a nice location. It was on the on the River Rhine. Oh wow! Okay. And, uh, yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I mean, yeah, that's that 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 uh, FMA festival yeah. would be a good idea if you can if you yeah once we're settled with this COVID thing because yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. hard to plan. And um, I have some so yeah I have some uh, I don't have it in my mind now. It's it's, it's Tobias will be there with Dosso Paros. <laughs> Some Balintawak people will be there. Uh, there will be Latosa Eskrima. Uh, I couldn't get anybody from Modern Anis now, but I, I, I'll ask. I'll ask again. Uh, 
I don't know if Dieter, we have so many high ranked modern Anis people in Germany. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, uh, maybe you can ask him uh, any of his high ranking. Um, uh, yeah, I, I sent an open request on this conference forum. And, uh, yeah. but I, I, I will uh, start looking again for instructors as soon as it will. Yeah, we, I've got, uh, I've interviewed uh, one guy from, uh, who's, uh, who's doing Kabaroan there. Okay. Dirk, Dirk, Dirk Young? I don't know. I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll introduce you to him yeah. uh, through, through yeah, the chat. Okay, right. Because he, he does Kabaroan and he also, uh, he also like is into like security. Okay. It's so the style where they have uh, yeah. a little bit shorter sticks. And they be a bandana. I think so, and yeah. Bandana. Oh, no, no, no. I don't understand with the bandana. No, but but it's, it's, <laughs> the style sounded similar. But okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've got... Uh, Six that I inter six 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 I interviewed who works in the museum. Okay. He I think he does he does uh he does PTK. Okay. Uh and he's also into HEMA, I think. Okay. Yeah. So ah I think I know yeah. him. I know him from from the martial arts forum, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I interviewed both of them maybe sometime August or September. Yeah, okay, okay. Just yeah. So yeah, yeah, but I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you to the chat group. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Yeah, and, um, yeah this, this, this is um, my plan for the future. And yeah, just, or not? just, just, just keep going. It's, yeah, um, that's all we can do. And maybe, maybe, maybe we can I do. can manage to visit the Philippines once more. But uh, that would be great. Yeah, but it's, this is in the far future and I, don't yeah don't when, when you visit when you visit the philippines uh don't fail to visit uh um uh, grandmaster nicanor so tamiento okay and grandmaster erman licanto as well ah, okay i think they were yeah, because they, they were at the master's gathering uh, at the master's council mm -hmm. and they did uh, some some kind of demo yeah yeah and um uh yeah, it's um, uh, I lost track again um, because I'm I'm reading in the comments. Uh, um, yeah, Uwe, uh, Tobias was the first that I asked, and of course he will join. He will be uh, one of the instructors, oh. and. Um, where, where did we stop? Um, you're saying that uh, you met uh, Grandmaster Nicanor ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was at the, at the, at the in the Philippines. Concert, yeah. Yeah. A lot, of, lot of people were there, but I'm, I'm, I'm very bad with names, and uh, a lot of old, yeah, a, lot lot of old a lot Wait, of old say? masters were there. Really, they came from uh, some came from Panay, and. Uh, yeah, Mang Polding was one of the names. Yeah, yeah, but I think if I'm not mistaken, Mang Polding is already has already. I, I, I heard something, yeah, like that. I think, uh, yeah, quite shortly after that, and uh, mm. yeah, it was very nice. I I, I met uh, Bot there, and uh, John was there as well, of course. And, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think uh, John, John, uh, Sean, Sean had to introduce the white boys, yeah, because John me and we were uh, the tallest there, and I think we were a little bit shown around. <laughs> Look at my <Michael. laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Especially, <laughs> yeah. especially Joe, he's yeah, yeah. big even for German standards, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? You could see him if he's sat on a tricycle. It was <laughs> the, the, the mountain there. This is Joe, and uh, he couldn't couldn't wow. get lost. And it was it was very great if he if we were introduced to people and we we were seated, 
and um, a man introduces yeah. this Joe from Germany, and when he stood up, everybody was like, <laughs> he just got bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and it was man always the same joke oh, just a moment okay i'm getting a cramp <laughs> oh no I, I was on this uh, christmas market and i was out in the cold cold the whole time oh yeah well yeah can't blame you but yeah definitely you're gonna get cramps. Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, I mean, speaking of going to the Philippines, uh, we were planning a big yeah. event for Lighting Scientific next year, but yeah. it didn't John, happen. John told me about it, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, chance, chances are I would have joined, and. Um, yeah, it was yeah. a great experience for me, really. It was uh, a, a big eye-opener, and um, I think I had a lot of misconceptions before. And because in Germany, it was, especially in the 90s, there was it was really a big issue. Is there a difference between Arnis, Eskrima, Kali? <laughs> yeah, and... It, Oh no! Okay. Was, of course, it was a complete bullshit discussion, but uh, you still get asked these questions these days. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. There, I realized it's okay. It's just a name. It's just words. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's it's much more important what you do and with whom you work together than. Exactly. How to call your how to call exactly. your style, yeah. Especially exactly. if I, I, exactly. I saw if I, if I see uh, Manolo's guys, the, the name Mandi Rickman Kali Radman has no connection to mm -hmm. lightning scientific anis, the word, but it's exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. And um, mm. here they are still um, because um, most people call it a screamer in Germany. I. I, even I, I, I call my class as prima class, because then I don't have to explain. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I think the, even here in the UK, a lot of people call it uh, yeah. screamer more than Arnis. They, they. And yeah. In, in, in Germany, it's, <laughs> so if you say a screamer, most people think it's Latosa screamer. If you say Arnis, they think it's more than Arnis. And uh, because yeah, okay. they don't All right. really get it that it's uh, yes. yeah, it's it's a it's a generic yeah, yeah. it's a generic name. And, um, so, yeah. Okay. So um, it's um, it really doesn't matter how you call it here, <laughs> because um, um, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but yeah, you you, you won't be able to uh, blame some people are still into like. Yeah, yeah, Names. yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah somehow it's like the, the 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 Kali discussion we have. If, if is is it really a word or yeah? It's but I think yeah, Inosanto made it famous, and so well, some people followed him and then also called it Kali. Mm. And, uh, <coughs> That's no, true. It's, but it's it's I think it's just yeah, it's just words. It, your style is not. Older or younger or newer, if you call it Anis or Kali or yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's it. That's exactly true. At, at the end of the day, it's it's basically about your yeah. skills and how you use it, how you teach it, how you express yeah, it. Is, <clears throat> is, um, some people still believe uh, if you do something with blades, it's Kali. If it's a stick, it's a, it's a screamer or anus. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. We it's gonna be a whole lot of discussions yeah. when when we get yeah. into that. <laughs> in, in Germany, we have the the, the the fun expression "Kali is my messer," which means Kali is with a knife. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Because, yeah, but yeah, there I need, are. I need to remember that. There are 
there are people that really believe it. All right. And I, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's wrong that some people think that a style is inferior if it's basically mainly stick. I I like it to be a stick art because I can I can actually practice with a stick. I can hit somebody with a stick and somebody can hit me yeah. with a stick. I will never have yeah. a, a sword do it, you will, I hope. Yeah. But um, it's more likely to to deal with a stick. Yeah. Then, and, yeah, um, yeah, that's true. That's true. I love blade work and it's interesting and in, in, in the context and, and I, I I like to to do both, but from a practical standpoint, I would say it's stick, at least in my in my environment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, understanding how to use it as an as, as, as a force yeah, yeah. multiplier, impact weapon. And, uh, yeah. Also yeah, that's true. not even from an application point of view, but it's I do it because I love it. Yeah, it's it's not if mm. I need it. Or, yeah, I'm I'm over that point. Yeah, um, but um, I, I hope I can do it as long as possible. Uh, we we have this yeah, we, we have this examples that. of old grandmasters that have to be put on the mat and but then they do magic with their sticks yeah but when they move and, um, uh, this isn't possible with tennis or football or yeah but, but with martial yeah. arts you yeah always can do something mm. that's true that's very true okay um so guys, do you have you got any more questions uh, for Christian? Uh, if not, um, once again, Christian, I would like to thank you very much for being my guest here yeah, nice, uh, in nice. FMA discussion yeah. and for basically uh, bearing the lightning scientific Arnis. Thank, thank, thank you for having me here. It's been a yeah. great pleasure <clears throat> and an honor. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, one of the things that we asked our guests at the end of the interview is um, what I would say words of wisdom that you can leave to our viewers as far as the FMA community is concerned. Words of wisdom from me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should have told me before, then I would have. <laughs> yeah. that, that, I, I really, yeah. That's the ambush part. I really don't have. <laughs> One really keep training and any thoughts any thoughts that you want to share with our community uh, save the planet um, I really I have to, I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not not the guy for big words and I think yeah work together as human beings regardless in which in which part be it martial arts or whatever, uh, we have to work together. And uh, most of us are quite nice, actually. <laughs> and um, yeah, but but I really, I don't have a big wisdom, really. It's like, um, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, well said. I mean, not just for FMA, not just for martial arts, but it's actually what, what you said is something that we should really yeah. strive for. Yeah, I, 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 I do agree. I do agree with you with, with what you said. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, once again, <clears throat> thank yes, you very much uh, for coming for coming in as our guest. Um, Brett has a, has a comment. I see this whole thing or life as an expression of self. Very true. If you do not have the courage to express or share, then you simply lack the courage or self-belief. I do realize I have overstepped my boundaries, but but may we three achieve something. Very cool interview. Okay. Thank you very much, Brett. Thank you very much. Uh, we yeah. 
I, I'm we're glad that you enjoyed the interview. Thank you, and I, yeah. I don't think. And thank you for coming. I don't in. think that you overstepped any boundary. No, no, I don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, same, same with Completely me. Completely okay. Same with me. And uh, yeah, same yeah. with me. Yeah. Thanks that you liked liked the interview. I hope everybody enjoyed yeah. it. And uh, I I haven't spoken yeah. that much English for quite a while, so. <laughs> So that's this is a good yeah, practice for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, uh, it, whatever whatever basically you've got uh, going on or future activities like for school, yeah. don't hesitate to post it to uh, FMA discussion, yeah, or you can send me the link so I can share yeah. it with them. And I'm looking forward to that uh, martial arts festival that you. Me too. Planning. Me too. I hope. And when I started, I had or, the idea. It looked like Corona would be over last summer. So I hope next year. We'll see. I hope next year. Fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah fingers yeah. crossed. Fingers okay. crossed. Okay. Okay. All right. I once again thank you very much, thank bro. You. And I'll see you cross uh, cross sticks with you. Okay. Sometime. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Stay safe. Thank Bye. You and to everybody. Bye. Bye -bye. Right. So that was Christian von Braun of Lighting Scientific Arnis in Germany. Thank you very much, everybody, for um, st stopping by, for watching this interview. Uh, for those who asked questions, those who interacted, thank you very much. And again, um, after this interview, it's going to it will be posted in the FMA discussion YouTube channel. So please subscribe there if you haven't yet, because again, all the monetary gains that we get from the channel will be sent to uh, charities. So we're going to let you know what uh, what group or which charity that will be receiving um, the funds that will be coming from the YouTube channel. So please. Please, please uh, share this with your friends and ask your friends to subscribe them uh, to to the to the channel. And I mean, all the all the past interviews will be there as well, anyway. So it would be good for you if if you want to uh, watch them. Um, and again, this coming Sunday, we're going to have the FMA discussion Christmas raffle. If you haven't bought your tickets yet, please uh, contact Dean Franco for it. It's only five dollars or five bucks per ticket. And we do have fantastic prices. Okay. So um, enjoy the rest of the week um, and stay safe, guys. I'll see you this weekend for the raffle. And next week, I'm going to have Tobias Rickers as my guest for FMA discussion. Right. Signing off.